North Carolina is one of just two states that's having competitive elections for governor this November, the other being New Hampshire. And in today's video, we're going to talk about why Republican nominee for governor Mark Robinson is likely to lose in a landslide against his Democratic challenger, Josh Stein, in a relatively red state. So we're going to go into the polls for this race. And we're going to talk about Mark Robinson as a candidate more specifically. And then we're going to analyze whether or not this lopsided result for governor is going to have an impact on the top of the ticket presidential race in North Carolina. So we're going to get to all of that in just a second. But first, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing down below and liking this video if you enjoy. So Josh Stein is the current attorney general of North Carolina. Mark Robinson is the current lieutenant governor. So far, this race heavily favors Democrat Josh Stein. The latest polling aggregates out of RCP give Josh Stein a 16% lead over Mark Robinson. Now, that's actually three points larger than the lead that Josh Shapiro had over Doug Mastriano before the election. That margin, I believe, was only around 12 points. So already, Josh Stein is polling better than Josh Shapiro. Mark Robinson is at a pathetic 37%. Any state that hasn't voted for a Democrat for federal office since 2008. So while statewide politics is different, it's pretty sad that a Republican nominee is only polling at 37%, where the worst performance Republicans typically have here is 47, 48%. So that goes to show you already that Mark Robinson is a uniquely awful candidate. Now, Mark Robinson hasn't led in a single poll for this race since back in June. And in fact, if we go back to 2023, and again, of course, this is obviously very premature polling at the time, but Mark Robinson was actually leading Josh Stein, likely because he had higher name recognition. So both candidates were actually elected in 2020 to their positions. Josh Stein was reelected as attorney general of North Carolina by about a point or so. And Mark Robinson won his election for lieutenant governor by nearly three points. So... You would think that Mark Robinson would have a advantage in this race since North Carolina already had two straight terms of a Democratic governor. Mark Robinson won by a larger margin than Josh Stein in 2020. And yet these are the polling results that we get. Now, obviously, some of this has to do with the giant scandal that broke a couple weeks ago, which had Mark Robinson say pretty outrageous things on these online forums. He also has been found to have a profile on a website that's used for extramarital affairs. So he already has a laundry list of just horrible positions, statements, and personal issues. And once this nuclear bomb of a story went off, that basically doomed Mark Robinson's chances. Now, to be fair, Mark Robinson was going to lose either way. I've been saying consistently for months now that Mark Robinson was going to lose to Josh Stein. He's just too extreme for the state of North Carolina. And, you know, a lot of the statements he has made even before this big bombshell broke uh, were enough to basically make him unelectable. He said he basically would support uh, no exceptions on abortion. There have been ads all over the state run by Josh Stein and his super PACs putting that out. That already makes him kryptonite to suburban moderate voters. And then, of course, couple that with what recently broke and Mark Robinson is impossible. Uh, as a candidate. So that obviously leaves the North Carolina GOP in a very precarious position because they currently have a supermajority in the legislature. And I can guarantee you now, if Josh Stein is winning this election by 15 plus points, Republicans are going to lose that supermajority, even if there is a significant amount of split ticket voting, which there likely is going to be. Now, I think the big question for this race is whether or not it's going to have negative connotations for Donald Trump's chances in the state, something a lot of people have dubbed reverse coattails, meaning that with one really bad candidate on the ballot, it essentially spoils the bunch. This really hasn't played out in presidential elections. If it had, you would have thought that Todd Akin would have hurt Mitt Romney's chances in Missouri back in 2012, but that wasn't the case. He won the state fairly comfortably. So reverse coattails in presidential elections has yet to be proven. But what some have argued is that Mark Robinson's presence on the ballot will bring out more low propensity voters uh, to come out and vote against him, which I don't really think is a strong argument because pretty much all these people voting in a presidential election were going to vote anyway. I don't think Mark Robinson drives people out to vote. I think the big issue for voters in North Carolina is the top of the ticket, which is why you've consistently seen, even though Josh Stein is leading Mark Robinson by 15, 16 points in polls, 
the presidential polls are fairly competitive. And that means voters are making a distinction between Mark Robinson and Donald Trump. Donald Trump is consistently polling a few points ahead or a few points behind Kamala Harris, whereas Mark Robinson has consistently polled very behind Josh Stein, especially since this scandal broke. And even you can go before uh, this scandal broke. Josh Stein was leading by nine points, 10 points, 10 points. So even before this story broke, Mark Robinson was finished he really had no chance and now it's just going to be worse because the margin of defeat is going to be catastrophic you know if we take a look at the electoral map in north carolina you're probably going to see a lot of counties that roy cooper couldn't even win in his re-election bid go blue for example cabarrus county this is a county that has been closer on the presidential ballot i believe donald trump only won here by around eight points in 2020 Dan Forrest only won here by four. I think it's nearly impossible at this point for Mark Robinson to be able to win this exurban county outside of Charlotte. Mark Robinson probably loses it by several points. You're probably going to see Josh Stein get over 70% of the vote in Wake and Mecklenburg counties, and that's going to be disastrous across the state. You're going to see some of these light red counties, Greene County, for example, Wayne County, all across the state probably flip blue. Jackson County, and you're just going to see these urban cores get much, much bluer and a lot of these ex-urban Republican counties get a much lighter shade of red. You could potentially see even Union County, North Carolina, a super Republican ex-urban county brought down to a margin of just single digits for Mark Robinson. So it can't really be overstated just how awful his appearance on the ballot is going to be because you could potentially see some of these Stein voters vote Democrat down ballot and that basically all but destroys Republicans chances of holding on to the supermajority, which means Josh Stein is likely going to be much more effective than Roy Cooper was because he doesn't have a supermajority that can override his vetoes uh, like in the instance of Roy Cooper. So whether or not this hurts Donald Trump, I don't think it hurts Donald Trump. Now, Donald Trump could very well lose North Carolina, but I think that's going to be of his own volition, not necessarily because Mark Robinson is on the ballot, although a lot of people in Trump world are very scared about the prospect of losing North Carolina because Mark Robinson is on the ballot. And honestly, Donald Trump really only has himself to blame for that because he has propped up Mark Robinson and many other candidates like him, Doug Mastriano, Kerry Lake, and they're all on track or have lost very winnable elections by wide margins. Kerry Lake is going to lose to Ruben Gallego by a decent amount. Doug Mastriano got absolutely destroyed in the Pennsylvania race for governor back in 2022. And honestly, this race has a lot of similarities. You have an extreme Republican who many in the statewide and federal party have distanced themselves from. Tom Tillis didn't endorse Mark Robinson even before that big story broke. You have a popular incumbent Democratic attorney general who's very uncontroversial going up against an extremist. And the result is a landslide election in a pretty purple state. So the Republican Party really has to assess itself and its nominees and do a better job at vetting their candidates because quite frankly, this isn't the first and it's probably not going to be the last time this has happened. Mark Robinson could have been stopped before the primary. Uh, if this is true and there's been a rumor that this was released by Republican operatives, they could have released this damning information months ago, but instead they sat on it until the day before the deadline for Mark Robinson to drop out because allegedly the Stein campaign hadn't even uncovered these internet profiles saying all these inflammatory statements. So if this was the Republicans doing, it should have been done months ago, not the day before the dropout date, because Mark Robinson has been very defiant. He's staying in the race. North Carolina has been impacted by a horrific hurricane, devastation flooding all across Western North Carolina. Mark Robinson, as Lieutenant Governor, has been on the ground trying to provide relief and aid. And while that's all good and well, in terms of his electoral prospects, it's not going to help him at all. And early voting in North Carolina is certainly not going to be kind to him. I think voters are locked in. Josh Stein is not debating Mark Robinson. So there really is no opportunity for Mark Robinson to come back from this. It's impossible for him to win this race for governor at this point in time. Even if Donald Trump wins North Carolina by four or five points, which I think is unlikely, he's not going to carry Mark Robinson over the finish line. North Carolina has a history of electing Democrats for governor. In fact, North Carolina has a history of electing Democrats for governor. In fact, 2012 was the only time this century, you have to go all the way back to the 1980s to find the last time North Carolina elected a Republican governor before Pat McCrory. It was in 1988. 
And since then, North Carolina has consistently elected Democrats for governor. And I don't think 2024 is going to be any different. These races have gotten closer. They've gotten more competitive as North Carolina has gotten more red as a state. But overall, I think that this trend of North Carolina electing Democrats down ballot is probably going to continue. And I think Mark Robinson's presence on the ballot really hurts statewide Republican candidates. But I don't really think it's going to hurt Donald Trump. Again, I've said before, I think Donald Trump, if he loses North Carolina, it's going to be uh, because of other issues. It's not going to be because of Mark Robinson. The Trump campaign has distanced themselves from Robinson and they really want nothing to do with the guy anymore. He's been blacklisted from the rallies. He's not allowed to be seen near Donald Trump. So they've made it very clear they want nothing to do with him. And I think Republicans even are saying all across the state uh, that they're going to vote for Donald Trump and either abstain in the governor's race or vote for Josh Stein. So just like Doug Mastriano, Mark Robinson is going to lose a very winnable race by an outstanding margin. And I think it stands as a warning for the Republican Party that they have to do a better job at actually vetting candidates. And if there are skeletons in the closet, expose them early before these candidates can gain traction and now Republicans are stuck with Mark Robinson. He's going to lose. They have 0% chance at winning this governor's race. And there's really nothing that can be done about it, uh, except that maybe next time they'll run a better candidate. But Josh Stein, like Josh Shapiro, is probably going to end up being a popular governor, probably because he's going to be put in check by the Republican legislature. And he's probably going to win re-election in 2028. So Republicans have probably locked themselves out of the governor's mansion for another eight years in a usually Republican state. But anyway, that's it for today's video. I'll release my more detailed prediction on North Carolina's race for governor, as well as the other contests in 2024 at the end of this month, beginning of November. So stay tuned for that. As always, if you enjoyed this video, leave a thumbs up down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.